It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Wednesday evening, August 23rd. Welcome back to Nightly Newsletter. We're covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro this evening. Crude is bullish with a spike in channel just a few ticks above the prior day high, which tells us to focus on buying a deep pullback into the battle zone to avoid getting chopped up around the prior high of day. The S&P is bearish and getting ready to fill profit targets for the sellers. So we're waiting for buyer failures up above the moving average to avoid selling too low tomorrow. The Nasdaq is bearish, but sitting right on the market's objective. It's a horrible place to sell right now in the Nasdaq. So we're staying patient for a trap off the low or a strong break lower for a possible measured move target tomorrow. Gold is bullish and just about to reach its target, which tells us to stay patient for traps off the high or a successful breakout pullback to new lows tomorrow and of course the euro is bullish with a spike in channel which tells us to look for buying opportunities after a two-legged pullback off the highs but we have another big news that are in store for you guys and gals tonight we get a bunch of big news on the schedule for tomorrow getting ready to wrap up this uh, fourth week of the month of August, right? We'll talk about Thursday's uh, calendar here in a moment. But most importantly here, we have a bunch of big ranges to work with, a bunch of really obvious trends, and we're going to talk about what I call the market's objective and how that plays into our plan for tomorrow. Before we jump in, though, I do want to remind you, the only place to watch the full-length version of this video is on our blog here at SidewaysMarkets.com. If you're watching the video right now on our YouTube channel, not to worry it's just a snippet of the entire video on our YouTube channel not to worry in the description of that YouTube video you'll find a link in there follow that link and come join me here on the blog at sideways markets for the full-length version while you're here don't forget join the newsletter mailing list that way you can always get an email from me when our full-length version goes live every evening Monday through Thursday don't forget follow me on social lower left-hand corner stock twits Twitter Facebook LinkedIn whatever your flavor of choice is. make sure you follow me there throughout the week for important charts links and updates and don't forget you can download all the charts from tonight's video that's right how easy is that get all those charts ready for tomorrow download those charts in tonight's video by following that link on the website lower left hand corner and then don't forget to grab that free pass that's right upper right hand corner grab that free pass come join me as a guest in the trade room this week or next and of course, you guys can learn more with me in 90 minutes on that free pass than you will anywhere else on the interweb. So I can pretty much guarantee that. If you have any questions on the way, any questions, hit me up on live support. We get a live support button on the right hand side of our blog and the homepage of our website. Hope you guys had a great hump day. We survived inventories, another relatively low volume summertime session, but that doesn't mean we're setting up for a great day tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, Thursday, August the 24th feels like we're just about ready to finish up the month of August but we still have almost a full week next week as well so as we go into Thursday and Friday we know that a lot of people are squeezing out the last few drops of their summer vacation and so we know kids are about to go back to school I think in Los Angeles they go back to school either either tomorrow or or middle of, of next week I can't recall which one it is but the kids are going back to school soon which means we have potential for some more low volume as the rest of this week unfolds keep in mind right the fall season is just around the corner and that is always the best time of the year to be a trader so get a word of caution here tomorrow uh, tomorrow and Friday we'll talk about this more on Friday as well but Thursday and Friday you know tomorrow obviously being a, a Thursday right but Friday being a summertime Friday so what you want to think about is get to it early right tomorrow and Friday early in early out beware of those late afternoon you know summertime slowdown market so remember to keep an eye uh, on the volume tomorrow keep an eye on the market personality once we start seeing that volume dry up we know the reliable trades are to be earlier in the day most likely for tomorrow other than that right we get a peppering of news tomorrow morning you can see the GDP from Great Britain we get jobless claims here in the US and we get the home sales number at 10 a.m. Eastern time honestly I don't expect the GDP to be too big of a mover uh, the jobless claims haven't moved the markets in like 10 years now so really the only major you know really the only major kind of uh, you know market moving event tomorrow is I expect to be around 10 a.m. that existing home sales number so keep an eye on the time tomorrow there's a reason why we call it the 10 o'clock shock and that is because oftentimes we see big moves around 10 a.m. tomorrow morning so if you guys are trading London because 
of the GDP tomorrow morning at 4.30 a.m. Probably not going to see that react too badly to it. We've had some great overnight London sessions over the past few days, so get at it early tomorrow if you're in London. If you're with me tomorrow morning, we open up our trade room at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Don't forget to come out and join me as an advanced member, and we'll trade the plan together. Let's jump right in. we got crude, S&P, NASDAQ. We'll wrap up with some gold and some euro tonight. Starting off tonight with the crude oil market. Crude is bullish with a spike in channel and trading one, two, three, four legs higher at the quadruple up target right from earlier today. Now, the spike in channel tells us that buyers have been working this market higher for a long time today. And anytime we see a market moving this long in one direction, that tells us that buyers are probably going to be ready to take some profit, right? They're probably looking to sell out of some of their long positions, take some profit off the table before buying at a lower price tomorrow. The goal is to look for buying opportunities down in that battle zone, right? That green rectangle, because we are just a few ticks above the prior day high. That prior day high at 41.21, it will often act as a price magnet. So trying to buy above the prior day high, unless we see some real strength going to that prior day high, I'd rather be buying below the prior day high right, than buying above it. So the goal is to get this price down into that battle zone, 48.11, 47.98. That way we can use that prior day high up at 48.21 as a price magnet for tomorrow. Now, today we're going to talk a lot about what I call knowing and, and trading the market's objective, right? Using the market's objective. And what I want to kind of illustrate here for you is real quickly is that whenever we have a real strong move higher, we know that buyers are buying dips, buyers are buying dips. Well, what's going to happen once we get Oh, I don't know, one, two, right, three, maybe even on crude oil, right, four legs higher, right? When we're, we're three or four legs higher on the chart, that usually tells us most buyers are going to start taking profit. Now, what happens when buyers take profit? They become sellers. And when they become sellers, we then, of course, start seeing uh, pullbacks off the high. Now, when we get a pullback off the high, I'm always looking for such as a two-legged pullback, right, back down to some areas of support, right? So find some areas of support. That's where we want to start looking to buy low, right, on the pullback. Now, at this point in the game, it's really important to understand where is the target for the buyers. I call this the market's objective, right? I call this the market's objective. In a bull market, the buyers are always trying to buy low with an objective going back to the high. In a bear market, it's the opposite, right? The bears are trying to sell high and go back down to retest the low. So just kind of recap here, right? Strong move higher, right? Again, this, this is going to play into a lot of what we're going to cover tonight. Strong move higher going higher, right? Two, three, four legs higher. That's about a good time to start taking some profit, right? Most buyers take profit. When they take their profit, right, they become sellers and price pulls back. Well, you know supply and demand, right? The, the fundamentals of how these liquid markets work is that when the market gets low enough, right, buyers will re-enter the market, right? When the price gets discounted, buyers come in, they have demand for lower prices, right, and prices get bought right back up. Now, where is their objective? Their objective now is to go back up and retest the high. So the reason why I went over this is because I want you to see you need to know what phase, right, what phase we're in. So think of this kind of as the, right, the, the, the three phases of the, right, market objective, right? So think about it this way, right? Are we in continuation phase? Are we in, right, kind of making our way, right, developing that trend? Or are we already three or four legs up, right? Are we a little bit too high to buy? And are we now going to wait, right, to buy low? Or maybe we've already bought low, right? Maybe now we're up around that objective right now. Where are we? Who has control? Where's their objective? And where are we, right? Those three questions are always what I want to ask. Are we developing the trend higher? Or are we buying low? Or are we at the objective, right? The next step is, is going to be, are we going through the objective? Or are we pulling back off the objective, which usually forms a trading range. We'll talk more about that in more detail in our classroom sessions, but that's the basic principles I want you to be understanding for tonight. Going forward, looking at crude right now, 
what phase do you think we're in right now, right? Those three phases of markets objectives, right? What, what, what phase are we in right now? We're in the development phase. One, two, three, four, right? We got four legs higher, right? That's what I call a quadruple up. So right now, we've, we've spent pretty much all day, right? Spent the, the early part of the session trading inside of a range, right? But the afternoon, though, is pretty much all bullish. Now, if you were a bull, right, and you bought down here, you'd probably be thinking about taking some profit right now, right? So now, we're going to shift into that second phase, right? That second phase now where now let's look for that nice pullback so we can buy low. Now, crude oil, right, is, is getting ready to transition into its phase number two. But in just a moment, you're going to see on the S&P, the gold, right, the euro, NASDAQ, you're going to see how a lot of those markets are already back up to retest the high, right? So see that illustration kind of coming to life here now? Strong move up here for the bulls. Right, we're four legs up. And I'll, don't forget, I'll teach you guys how to find the two, three, four. Right, we cover that in our beginner and our intermediate classes. Really, really simple there. But bottom line is, nice strong move up. Right, I don't want to buy high. I don't want to buy the high. I don't want. I don't pay a premium price. I want to pay a discounted price. So the goal is, let's wait for price to pull back. We get a little bit of rising support here. Right, nice rising support trend line coming off those lows bit of a battle zone developing and I like this battle zone to be a buyer right the battle zone uh, my definition of the battle zone is really just an area where the buyers can buy low and in this case the sellers it's low enough to make the sellers think the markets reversed that's why I call it the battle zone right because the buyers are waiting to buy low but if we pull back far enough right it's a little bit of a bigger pullback right it isn't a small pullback to the moving average the battle zones below the moving average it's low enough to attract buyers in but think of it this way it's also low enough to make the sellers think the trend is reversing and when I can get the opposite side of the market to get fooled then it slams right towards my target. It's a very, very effective way to trade. And this goes for any liquid market. This is not just crude oil, right? Any, any liquid market, right? Keyword is liquid, right? Not, not illiquid markets. We'll talk more about liquid markets and illiquid markets in our beginner classes. So I want to buy nice and low. Now, one thing that got my eye on right now is that prior day high, right? That prior day high, for example, if I try to buy too high up here, it's likely to roll back over, right, and get stuck around that prior day high. Prior day highs and prior day lows, they act as price magnets. So if I have a bull market, I'd much rather get below the price magnet, right, and use that price magnet, right, to help my trade. Does that make sense? Right? If I know that prior day high is likely to bring that price back towards it, do I want to be buying, do I want to be buying above? Right? Or do I want to be buying below? I think that's pretty easy, right? I want to be buying below. So the goal here for crude, again, right? Buy that dip, right? Buy that dip down in the battle zone. And there's a bunch of different ways that we could do this. The most aggressive would be a trap below that 23. Traps, of course, are a term that I use to describe trapping the other side of the market, right? On or trapping trapping the bears based on the wrong side of the market. You can learn all about these trading terminology inside of our free trial, right? Don't forget, join the free trial right on the home page of the website, and you can learn all about right our trading terminology. You'll learn a whole lot there. Now, also, another option would be a failure. These are some of my favorites here. Now, as the market goes lower, sellers will confuse this as a bear market. When they fail, I can buy into their failure. Well, that failure usually pokes its head higher here and then gives us a quick opportunity here now, right, to buy the failure, but then buy the pullback, right? So those are some of my favorite ways to trade off of that, right, off that pullback. And then, of course, you've got a little bit of falling resistance here right now. So draw that trend line down. We'll have to see what this develops here overnight, right? But think about that as a trend line coming down and think about how we can use that trend line, not as resistance, right, but as support tomorrow. So very, very simple strategy there on crude oil. Where are we in the phases, right? We are in the continuation phase but now we're four legs up right so we're probably going to be in that profit taking phase so we can buy low and then again the goal is to get back up and retest that high now what if the price keeps going right what if we don't get a pullback you know hey we have the prior week high yeah there it is 49.32 you know it is low volume summertime trading right now right so what 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 if the price keeps going higher 
right? If the price keeps going higher, then we're still in that continuation phase, right? So what do I want to do? Stay patient for the pullback, right? And then again, where's the target, right? Going back up to retest the high. Four, right? Those four phases, learn those four phases of a, of a trending market and the best ways to trade them. Want to learn more? Definitely check out our free trial. I'm a little bit biased, obviously, right? We're all biased, I guess, right? I'm a little bit biased. I think our, I think our free trial is the best in the business. Check it out at schooloftrade.com. There's a link in the YouTube video description. Also, while you're here, don't forget, join our beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes. If you're brand new to day trading, our beginner course is going to lay that foundation nice and solid with you. Terminology, setting up your computer properly, setting up your whole office correctly, to be honest with you. I have a whole chapter in that beginner course on setting up your account with your broker, setting up your office, setting up your computer, getting your charts working properly. Right, Heck, I even provide a service here at School of Trade where I can connect to your computer and help you out with your charts as well. Don't forget to learn more. And if you have any questions, Right? I'm always here standing by on live support. Hit me up on live support on the right-hand side of the website. My name is Joseph. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We're going to do it again tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, as always, in the trade with our advanced members. And, of course, tomorrow afternoon we'll do it again, same time, same place, on our nightly newsletter. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here tomorrow. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.